I went to India once to speak at IIT Institute, the whole uh, in Mumbai. Okay. I'm sure you're familiar with IIT. It's I'm like, not. You're not. IIT is like they're MIT, right? Okay. And really enjoyed it. Went in there, got the food, stayed at the hotel, walked around, got a, met a bunch of different people, went to the slums. Went to that big house that the billionaire built, a $1.4 billion house that goes it's all the, the way up. Weirdest it's the looking 56 thing. 56 story right. apartment building. But in. it's right next to the slums. Is, is, well, everything's it, kind of next to the yeah. slums over there. So Yeah. So, so w- w- how often uh, do you perform in India nowadays? I think every three years, maybe. I hadn't, this, I just, when I did it this year, it was my first time back in five years. What's the reception like? They're always really great to me, you know? It's funny though because like I'm watching I, I'm watching the tide shift now, you know what I mean? It's like the older like the generation that grew up on me still shows up for me which I really love and appreciate and the younger generation now they're like all sensitive. They're all the Gen Z weirdos. That's that, what I was asking like is there Yeah, no, that, so now no the yeah. young kids will be like commenting on my page like how is this funny? All he does is mock people. I'm like shut the fuck up. You know, you don't do anything for Indians. I go, really? Look at all the fucking... I was the first one, motherfucker. You should have been there, too. Don't tell me I didn't do anything for my people. I opened a complete I opened a complete industry for them. What is it like? What is it like when you perform with them, though? I mean, y- y- look, you go up there... When I, Listen, India, is they're so sharp. Like, they... I don't... It's one of the countries where I always say... I'm, I'm always blown away with how um, I don't change my words. I don't change my pacing and nothing. I just do it the way I do it. And they're with me the whole way. They're not like, oh, what did he say? I didn't get that. They're, they're sharp as hell. And there's a reason they're about to be the, one of the major superpowers in the next five years. Yeah. You saw the whole thing with uh, Tim Cook is slowly uh, trying to move the production of the iPhone from China to India. And that's a slow move, and China's not happy about it. I, I don't know if you can pull up some numbers there, Rob, of what uh, move they've made. It's a big portion. I think a quarter of it right now is being made in India. There you go. The company aims to make right. 25% of its iPhone production in India by 2025 as it seeks to diversify its supply chain and reduce reliance on China. How much, for somebody that's families, how much has India changed the last 20, 30 years? I can tell you India has changed in the last five years since I was there. When I went back this March, I was blown away with how different it was. In already. what way? Uh, new buildings, f- more money floating around, m- nicer cars. I mean, the poverty's still there. Obviously, it's not going away, but um, the rich have certainly gotten richer. And but there's way more millionaires now and billionaires. And um, so Bombay has changed completely. Um, Bangalore has changed. Uh, Delhi has changed. But when I went to Calcutta, where my mom is from. Uh, I it felt good to, uh, I mean, uh, maybe it's a selfish reason, but I felt good to see that it hadn't changed at all. Because it's kind of like, you know, there's all those memories you have from growing up and going there as a kid and 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 just seeing the sights, sounds, and smells. And uh, it was like, okay, good. India's still India over here. Did you, did you, do you remember the book that came out years ago? I think it was like Tiger Mother or something like that. Tiger Mom? Or- the Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. You know, and this girl is explaining about what it was like to have an Asian mom and, you know, people were coming, I can't believe that's how hard it was. It's That's not the right way to raise your kids. I want to give you some data and some props to your community because okay. there's a lot, of, a lot of respect there. So uh, the highest earning ethnic group in America. Indians. Okay? Yeah. Indians, number one, $119,000, average annual income. Taiwanese, number two. Then it's Chinese, then Japanese, then Pakistani. Filipino, Indonesian, Korean. I'm a little upset with this list because I don't see any Armenian, Assyrian, or well, Persian. No, I was no, waiting for one of them. No, because credit card fraud's illegal. And um <laughs> or Armenian insurance fraud. I mean, you, you gotta hit them I mean, all. There's up, a lot right? of them. There's yeah, there's a lot. a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Listen, I know the I know these guys very well. Yeah, listen. I know all the Hovigs and Sarkises <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the uh, Jacobs and the <laughs> And the Hovannis and the, I know them all. What is it like being raised in an Indian family? Like, what are some weird things like, uh, you know, you hear stories, whether it's the discipline, you better grow up to be an engineer, you better grow up nope. to do this. What is it like? So for me, uh, so the type of Indian my family is, we're, when Indian people meet me, they go, what are you? Are you this? Are you that? I'm like, uh, how well do you know Indian history? Like, pretty good. And I go, do you know about Anglo-Indians? They go, huh? And I go, you don't know shit about Indian history then. We're, we're products of the British being there, my, my, my bloodline. And uh, so we're basically half-breeds that, and ha- the same half-breed kept marrying the same half-breed over and over. 
not the same, not related, but you a little know, a bit of incest going on. But nah, I get it; nah, it's nah, totally not with fine. Us. We're not like that. We're like, eh, nah, too close. We're going to try that one. Arranged marriage is not no, okay. None of that. Your cousin is really pretty. Yeah, no, that's... That's the one for you. Yeah, no, You're no. not like that, Russell? Not, none no. of that. No, none of that. Our culturally, growing up, we were more British, um, even in India. So when I would go to India as a kid, everybody spoke English in my grandmother's house, and everything was kind of normal to me. And then when I'd go outside and I'd meet the regular Indian kids, and, and I didn't know the difference, but I was like, oh, you guys don't do this? That's weird. Okay, that must be just us. And uh, so Anglo-Indians are like historically you know entertainers cooks chefs and then when the british were still in india we got all the government jobs police fire railway you know all that kind of stuff so we were scattered all over the country there's no one place for us in india so growing up because there's no professionals in my family nobody there was no pressure to do anything extraordinary my parents were shooting for mediocrity Really? Stands were low. Grow up and be a comedian. Or... Just, no, not even that. There wasn't even a thought then, but it was just like, <laughs> just get a regular job with a pension. So when Literally, you... you're not joking. No. My mom worked in Kmart. My dad worked in a meatpacking plant. Well, I mean, first when I came to America, Kmart was a big deal. I mean, yeah, but my were... mom didn't work in the head office. She worked in the cafeteria. Got you. You know what I mean? Got it. Yeah, I got, got yeah. it. So, and uh, so financial literacy was never something I learned. Uh, and hence why, you know, you know, I did dumb things when I got money because I had nobody guiding me with that. In these uncertain times, if there's anything we need is we need people to believe the future looks bright. So you, if you've heard about me saying this mission to you, we're on a mission to get a million people to wear this gear, and this is what we're doing. If you buy one of these hats, there's a category of buying one hat, getting the second one free. If you haven't yet worn this gear publicly, go ahead and test it out, buy some of the gear, wear it in public, and see how many people will stop by and say, you're also, you also watch a value team. You, you also follow PBD Podcast. I do too. Place your order. Go to vtmerch.com. Click on the link above or below. Place your order and represent the VT and the PBD Podcast gear. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.